So in the previous video, we used Spring Initializer to create a new Spring Boot application. We hosted the application in Microsoft Azure. And then after hosting it in Microsoft Azure, we tested the endpoint. It worked. We can just refresh again here. It works. We created another endpoint to greet. It works as well. In the code, we use version 3, which is a preview version of Spring Boot. And then <clears throat> here are all the dependencies that we have. And then this is how our application currently looks. When consumers of the RESTful API want to test it, they actually need to know upfront which methods are available. Currently, there's no way to actually visualize that. Luckily, there is Swagger UI, which allows you to visualize all the API endpoints which are available in a particular API. We're going to implement it today, and then we're going to test it out. Let's go. The library which implements OpenAPI, which brings us Swagger, in Spring Boot is SpringDoc. If you head over to springdoc.org and scroll down, it'll actually show you which project dependencies to add to our project XML file to make Swagger work. So let's just scroll down a bit. And here it is. So we're just going to copy this using version 1.6.9. Go back to our code and then our project XML file. Scroll to dependencies. Let's add a dependency here. What we copied from that Spring Doc website. Let's paste it here. Save it. Before we synchronize the build, remember we're using a preview version of Spring Boot. Let's just make sure we're using a stable version. If you go back to the Spring Initializer, you'll see that version 2.7.2 .2 is the latest stable version. Let's use that. Let's save this. Visual Studio Code will prompt us to actually update our build. Let's do that. If we go to our files here, you'll see that it's still updating our build. Probably dependencies, yes. So we're waiting for that Spring Dog dependency to actually appear here. There we go. Here's our Spring Dog dependency. Now, if you were following the series, you'd remember that we never downloaded the JDK at all. We just hosted it in Azure, which has a Docker image with the JDK. So we didn't need to install it on our systems at all to get it running. So let's install it. Go to jdk.java.net slash archive. Go to version 17, which is what we're using. Select your operating system and then download the archive. After the archive is done downloading, just extract it. Then move the extracted files to a particular folder of your choice. Then add that particular folder's path to environment variables. In Windows, we just right click your PC, properties, then advanced system settings, then environment variables, then edit to your path. After that's done, you might want to restart Visual Studio Code for the changes to take effect. After that's done in Visual Studio Code, there's an extensions icon here. Just click on it. Make sure the debugger for Java is installed. The extension pack for Java is installed so that we are able to debug our Java application. Go to your applications class and press F5. There we go. Our application has started. It's using the Tomcat server on port 8080. So let's browse there on localhost. We see that our default endpoint is working. Whoa, and just like that, we have Swagger for our REST API. Now there is something that's wrong here. We don't have a put for grid, we don't have a post for grid, and we don't have a delete for grid. So let's check why they are there. Let's stop debugging. If we look at our mapping here, it says request mapping, which is not specific to any particular HTTP method. Let's use get mapping. Save this, press F5. Done. 
application has started debugging let's go to our browser if we refresh this page perfect now we have our two gets let's push it to github so it can auto deploy using our ci cd pipeline to microsoft azure let's open source tree stage all and push now that it's pushed let's look at the state of our ci cd pipeline if we go to our github repo and go to actions we'll see that it's still building now it's deploying to microsoft azure the deployment is completed let's go to azure go to portal.azure.com and go to our app service then on the left hand pane go to deployment center then go to logs we'll see that our ad swagger push has triggered a CI/CD pipeline which is successful and is active let's browse to it go to overview and click on the url here it'll open a new tab in the new tab we'll find our default api endpoint let's type in slash swagger ui slash index.html perfect now swagger is in production stay tuned for the next episode of my virtual spring boot